Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Paint. Paint.net, to be specific. <clears throat> and uh, today we're doing a combat tutorial for Europa Universalis 3, 4, and Rome. I say all three because they pretty much share the same combat system. Uh, although Rome's combat system involves a lot more than three units. <laughs> uh, but... Either way, let's uh, start out with the basics here. Uh, there are three types of units. Infantry, archers, and artillery, depending on which game you're playing, and cavalry. Uh, so I'm going to be using... That's a quick little legend down there so you guys can see what's going on. And the battlefield is divided into four lines. The attacker's front and back lines, and the defender's front and back lines. So we're going to start out with a uh, just a small example battle that I can easily explain without, you know, too much work. So first thing we'll need are some infantry. So let's also the tolerance down. So we should have... Let's have three infantry on either side. And let's spice it up a little bit. Let's add a uh, couple of cavalry. On both sides, we're going to keep the battle even for now. Uh, and some archers and artillery. It's important to note in your opening Rosales Rome, horse archers are in fact archers and not cavalry for the uh, purposes of combat. Alright, now I have a assumption here that the combat width is 20. It can be different uh, in depending on which game you're playing. In Rome, it's defaulted to 20. In EU3 and 4, it goes up with military technology. So, uh, the front, so the so the combat width, which is actually literally how big these lines are, uh, you know, if you have, you know, if the combat width is 20 and you have 30 dudes that could go on the front line, 30 infantry, you can only have 20 there. Uh, and the rest have to sit in reserve until somebody dies and they come out to replace them. So, you know, you have to watch out for the combat width. Uh, you can find your current combat width in military technology. But, uh, let's get started. So, when combat begins, the, there are two things that happen. Uh, first off, the front lines... Uh, well, you know what, that's shitty. Let's, uh, let's get some black out here or something. Just for, man, I, I don't know. I, I guess I'll just have to use pointy stuff. <laughs> uh, freaking paint. It was paintbrush. Okay, not that big. Not that big. That's what she said. All right, so the front lines, which are these, are the two that are facing each other, will attack each other. I'm, I'm only stating that the infantry will. The cavalry will do something else. The infantry will attack each other, pretty much just like this. These three will engage each other. Alright? They will attack each other and deal damage based on a number of factors. Uh, any Rome unit types come into play, whereas in EU 3 and 4, uh, shock and fire values come into play. Uh, speaking of which, in terms of the EU 3 and 4, the shock and fire phases have nothing to do with how combat goes. It just affects the damage values. For example, during the fire phase, the unit's fire values are used. That means artillery are incredibly powerful during the fire phase. Cavalry, however, are very powerful during the shock phase. They can deal a lot of damage. Uh, so, you know, it doesn't actually affect how combat works. It just affects how much damage units deal. Um, Alright, so those will engage each other. And interestingly enough, the back lines, they, they are cool. They can just shoot at the enemy front lines without actually being there. They they don't have to put themselves in harm's way. They just shoot at the enemy front lines. That means these six guys will attack these three guys, and these six guys attack these three guys. Now I'm just saying, all right, that seems simple enough. What happens to the cavalry? Uh, this is, like I said, at the start of combat, that's what happens. Uh, immediately following the start of combat, too, these guys will go over here, and these guys will go over here, in essence. It, it doesn't really come over here or anything, but the, the point is they, they, they will not interfere with the main battle first. And they will engage each other. Each cavalry will engage each other. Now, uh, what happens next is we have to wait. Basically, until something dies. Um, 
The most common thing that will happen, because cavalry have an incredibly high damage value and an incredibly low health value, is that the cavalry will die. Somebody's cavalry will die. All right, so we're going to assume for a moment that, I don't know, uh, yeah, this guy's cavalry got wiped out and these cavalry survived. It, it, I, I can't say for certain exactly what happens. It depends on various things. But now you ask, okay, so they're done engaging. What do they do? What do they do? And they do what cavalry do. They flank. They will now run around here. You know, I'm trying to visualize this for you guys. It, it It's all done sort of on a mechanical basis. And in s these guys will now engage these guys. Now, in EU Rome, you'll notice that cavalry deal 200% damage towards archers. This is huge. This is, cavalry already have a really high damage value, and they're just going to slaughter the archers. Um, and in general, artillery have absolutely nothing for health. So, you know, uh, in general, you'll see the cavalry just shred the living crap out of anyone's archers. These are This is what is called the flanks. The cavalry that fight each other, they are the flanks. And winning and losing the flanks can be the difference between life and death. Um, there, There's one flank on each side, and, you know, the, when your units are deployed, the cavalry will automatically be on the flanks, and the infantry will be in the middle. Now, you ask, how big are the flanks? And the answer to that is however big you want them to be or however big your opponent wants them to be. They're the size of that the person chooses the higher number of. Um, so we're going to get some more cavalry back in here. Now, for example, or yeah, you know what? Let's change it up a little bit here. We're going to make the battle uneven now. All right, so this guy's running a very cavalry-heavy build, okay? This guy is running a very cavalry heavy build. Very, very, very cavalry heavy. He's got four cavalry, but only one infantry. Still got the same number of archers, though. Same number of units overall. So what happens now is, as as before, I'll use the paintbrush, these guys here will all engage on him. And these four guys will generally pick a target, probably a center guy. I'm not 100% certain how archers pick their targets. It may be that he'll attack him, he'll attack him, and he'll attack him. I can't say for certain on that. But now you see, whoops, you know, uh, secondary, choose that for black. And then there. No, 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 I want, damn it. And stupid paint. All right, Um. so these guys will engage on him. And these guys will engage on him. This, you know, this is a two-to-one advantage. This is a pretty significant advantage. This probably means that he's as good as one the flanks. But now, and that, you know, that's generally a good thing. That's going to wipe out this dude's cavalry. And that, in general, will mean that he's got open line on the archers. Four, four cavalry, three archers. Oof, they're doomed. They're doomed. So, the archers are in trouble. But now we have to ask the question, what happened if this guy here fell before the cavalry did? Oh no, the back line's exposed. The cavalry aren't stupid. They're not going to allow, well, let's, let's assume there, were, was no, the, there was no cavalry or something. Uh, if there was no cavalry, if the front lines collapsed, the back line is exposed, and the infantry and archers are clear to attack. They can... They can just beeline the back line, and since archers and artillery have very little health, they tend to die pretty quick. You're going to get wrecked if that happens. But, as I said before, what happens if these cavalry are still alive? Well, then cavalry will fall off the flanks uh, until, to, you know, to form up a, and uh, hold here. So, what now happens is the cavalry is the front line. Uh, the cavalry is no longer the flanks because there are no infantry left on the field. The cavalry will not allow you to charge right into the archers. They they will defend the archers with their life, as, as is a pretty wise thing. Uh, it's a very good thing that they do that because, again, archers can attack and tend to have pretty decent damage values. So, you know, you can... In, but you then ask, well, what about these guys? Can they flank the archers? No, they cannot. If there is only a front line for cavalry... Then the arc, then cavalry on this side will instead join the front line. The front, it, the flanks collapse into the front line, 
<laughs> so this is actually why uh, running full cavalry <laughs> can actually work. It prevents your opponent from being able to flank. It, it levels the playing field and prevents uh, flanking from happening. Uh, this is mostly for EU Rome. I don't ever recommend running full ca frontline cavalry in um, EU 3 or 4. It's just a very, very bad idea. You, you miss out on the combined arms bonus, and it's just generally not great. I, it can work, but you, that's a lot more advanced, and I'm not going to get into that. That's that's what I'm getting at. It's it's complicated. So, uh, but seriously, if both sides wanted to, they could run you know three dudes, three dudes here, um, and you could have like the most gigantic things ever for flanks. Like this would just be a flank. These cavalry would all square off against each other, and these two would square off against each other. That's that's how that works. Uh, the, there is no fixed size on the flanks. It is, however, although I should note that the cavalry will be evenly distributed on both sides. This this can never happen. Uh, it will always be half and half. Uh, so, you know, sometimes you'll have an extra dude on one side if you have an odd number. Uh, that's why I try and keep my uh, cavalry even. You know, twos, fours, sixes, eights, whatever. I try to avoid having an odd number of cavalry. It's a, just a general rule I go with. And then you don't have a slightly weaker flank than the other. On the other hand, you have a slightly stronger flank than the other, so we'll have to see how that goes. Whoops. Uh, let's get some white out here. Do, 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 do. Alright, so that's the basic gist of it. Now, um, like I said, one assuming that the combat continues to go on, the back line can in fact be wiped out before the front line. So let's assume that the top dude here has managed to win the flanks, and these guys are still engaging. You know, infantry are pretty tanky, they can take it. But now, these since these cavalry have managed to wreck shit on the back line, what if the back line's gone? Well, that's a very good question. For all intents and purposes, the cav if there is no back line, cavalry get a flanking bonus on the front line, causing them to deal double damage. That means if you've got, that means, you know, it's, let's visualize this. Uh, you know, your cavalry have just wiped out uh, the enemy's back line. So they are going to be, I said, they're going to be here. All right, these are, these are front and top guys' cavalry. They've made it behind. They've slaughtered all the archers. That means that they now get to attack like that. Although I'd like some black for that. They get to attack like this. And they will attack the front line for double damage. Meaning if you can clear out someone's back line of uh, their infantry, that's huge. Like that's That means your cavalry, which generally already have a high damage, now get to deal double damage against the front line. Winning the flanks can be the key to winning the battle. Um, but you have to be careful. Having too many cavalry means a weak center. Um, this is why I often run in EU 3 and 4 high, uh, high numbers of cannons. Because I've actually found it quite possible to uh, damage their front line beyond repair uh, very quickly. I have seen other people run incredible amounts of cavalry and dominate the flanks and then very quickly destroy the enemy's artillery. It, it, you, can, you can do whichever you wish. There, there may not necessarily be a perfectly right answer. I haven't run the exact numbers or anything to try it out. Um, so I can't say which is better to do. I do recommend the, uh, heavy, you know, heavy amounts of, uh, uh, artillery in front and a decent sized front line. When I talk about that, I mean like, you know, 10 artillery, 10 infantry, 4 cavalry. If the opponent comes to battle with anything less than like 5 infantry, he's, it's, it's, that's, you know, uh, 4 units per, uh, per front line. And that they're going to shred it pretty much about as quickly as the cavalry can shred. Uh, you, and the enemy cavalry is going to beat your cavalry. It's going to be over pretty quick. Uh, this is especially true for EU3 because the fire phase comes first. And remember, during the fire phase in EU3 and 4, the artillery are deadly. So if they, if they get the first pot shots off at the front line, which they do, that's great. Meanwhile, since the uh, cavalry have shit all for fire... They're basically going to be doing absolutely nothing until the shock phase kicks in. 
and in that first phase, you can cripple the enemy's front line beyond belief. You can deal huge damage to it. Uh, and that's just the way I play it. I've, I have seen some alternative play styles. Uh, feel free to go about that. Um, and in EU Rome, uh, as opposed to having fires and shock phases, units have certain uh, you know damage values against each other. Cavalry uh, deal 200% damage to archers, 125% to heavy infantry, 150% to light infantry, I think. I think that's it. Um, you know, uh, archers also deal extra damage to uh, heavy and light infantry in a Euro. So they actually deal, you know, a bunch of extra damage on the front lines, which, may, which makes them serve as uh, very good damage dealers. Now, uh, let's talk about something else in EU Rome, which is what I call the Horse Lords build, which is named after the, uh, which is more or less named after the, uh, national idea in EU Rome. And this is what a Horse Lords build looks like. There are, I would like to point out the entire backline will be made of solely horse archers. Absolutely no regular archers there. Alright. Now, let's assume that, you know, you're fighting your, uh, Let's uh, give them a couple extra archers just to be fair, right? And this is versus a standard army. We're going to assume that these guys here are uh, all heavy infantry. They're all the heavy infantry dudes. These guys are some cavalry. Now, remember what I said before. If, if your entire front line is made of cavalry, then the opponent cannot flank you. This, oops, uh, they do not get the ability to come around here. All right? They get nothing. They just join the front line, uh, which is okay. That, that that means you know you've successfully managed to eliminate the flanks in this scenario. And the important thing to note about this is horse archers are actually more effective against cavalry than uh, regular archers. Regular archers deal maybe fifty percent damage to cavalry. They are not suited uh, for fighting. So if, you know, you're fighting somebody like Rome who may not have the most access to horses, they don't have full horse archer lines in the back, they have, you know, only have regular archers or whatever, because, you know, there aren't exactly many horses on the Italian peninsula. You got some, but not really enough. So it, that's all right. Uh, so they got some archers mixed in here. That means these are the archers that are mixed in here. Let's uh, just assume that these guys here are the archers. They're going to do jack all for damage against your cavalry, uh, you know. And that's fine. That's that's great. That means your cavalry is more or less immune to some of the dudes in the back. That, that's great help. Um, the other thing to note is that horse archers, uh, because they have a very good damage value against cavalry, are actually okay if they're flanked. Uh, they, they can fight. The great thing about horse archers is when they're flanked, they can fight cavalry uh, pretty effectively. It, like having, some, having a back line made out of horse archers negates flanking too. Uh, which, you know, that's that's great. Um, so, assuming they do, f if your front line collapses and you have to fight cavalry, all the better. Because if their front line is made out of cavalry and heavy infantry, like you'd expect, then even if your front line collapses, your horse archers, they will wreck. They will wreck face of the enemy front lines, assuming that their front line is still standing. Because, you know, horse archers wreck face on infantry and cavalry. What, wait, 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 what are, what are horse archers weak to, you ask? And the answer will surprise you. And the answer is regular archers. <laughs> yeah, they are weak to the regular archers. It is terrible. I know. It's, it, it is terrible. The uh, regular archers beat on the horse archers. Which is also okay. Uh, cavalry, you know, stand pretty uh, pretty one-to-one -one with the horse archers, though I admit. But... For all intents and purposes, uh, I, I consider horse archers to be strong against them, even if just slightly. It's because they tend to get the first couple shots off. Uh, so that's what uh, this is. Now, there are certain modifiers for combat. Uh, we're going to swap to this. And the first modifiers, let's, let's go over the damage modifiers. Uh, morale gives you no damage modifiers. Uh, that, that, there's nothing. What do you get? Discipline. Discipline is a per, is a generally expressed percentage. In both games, in, in all games, it starts at 100%. Decisions, events, national ideas, what have you, raise or lower this. 
So if you have a if you have 110% discipline, all the damage you deal is multiplied by 1.1. So if you would normally deal 10 damage, you deal 11 damage to the enemy. Now, there are uh, there is uh, what do you call it? Uh, shoot, uh, morale. Morale and uh, a unit's uh, remaining strength are different. Um, here's another interesting factoid. When uh, e e units all have a morale damage too, not just a uh, fire shock damage, or in the case of EU Rome, they have regular damage and morale damage. Uh, cavalry are very, very, are actually deal a lot of additional morale damage. Uh, which, you know, means on the front line, that you, usually you can get the front line to route pretty good um, if you're running Horse Lords. Uh, this isn't necessarily the case for EU4 and, and 3. It's it Generally, you see uh, Cavalry with a higher uh, morale damage, but it's, and it's all right. Um, horse Archers tend to also have very good morale damage. Uh, so that, that that's good. You can, you know, get lots of them to run away. And if you're fighting a big battle, that's huge, you know? Uh, but there is there is a, a little secondary thing to this. Uh, in E Rome, war elephants deal almost no regular damage. But man, do they make the enemy rout. They, they, they have, uh, like, 0 0.5 regular damage, but have, like, 1 point, like, 2.0 friggin' morale damage. So... War elephants will just make the entire enemy run away. You won't get too many kills, but you'll just demolish their morale, which is great. Um, also, it should be noted, I believe, in EU4, artillery have generally pretty decent morale damage, um, which is great. But uh, you'll also notice that for certain things here. Uh, one, one of the points that I'd like to make out here is there are artillery... In, in EU4 that have more defensive stats than uh, offensive stats, generally speaking, you never want them. Uh, because the purpose of artillery is to demolish the enemy front line. This is a... I do not know why they exist. It's <laughs> paradox. They're stupid and should not exist. I mean, unless you're literally planning on going into combat without any cavalry to cover your flanks, I cannot see a single reason why you'd want them. You will need some cavalry. If you just bring some cavalry to cover the flanks and fight the enemy cavalry away, then the artillery gets to go to town. If the if you're in recruiting the defensive artillery, that just means they'll survive being flanked a little longer. Uh, you know, I think uh, having artillery with more damage is, at all times, much better. Um, if you have a choice of what cavalry you want, I actually generally suggest defensive cavalry. Uh, because... Well, it depends what you're running. If you're running large flanks, offensive cavalry is better because it'll chop through the enemy. If you're running, uh, you know, smaller flanks to defend against the uh, enemy cavalry, you want defensive cavalry. And infantry, uh, because I run such, I, I run small flanks and a lot of uh, artillery, I want to deal a lot of damage before the flanks are resolved. I want to deal, you know, want to cut the enemy front line down. Uh, I recommend defensive uh, infantry, but if you want to, um, if you're running the larger flanks then I could see, you know, I, I could see you wanting the defensive infantry in those cases. Uh, that's for, you know, EU3 and 4. In EU Rome, uh, the only two types of infantry in the game, well, war elephants are actually considered infantry. Uh, I should point that out. They are not cavalry. They are infantry uh, for EU Rome. The only three types of infantry in the game are light infantry, heavy infantry, and war elephants. We know what war elephants do. They're pretty cool things. Um... So that's that's not bad. Uh, heavy infantry are just all around better than light infantry. You never want light infantry unless you have absolutely no freaking money. There's no reason to have light infantry. They're useless. They have like negative damage values against everything. So they they just suck. <laughs> Don't get light infantry. It's like light infantry are what you do if you have no resources. <laughs> like even an army made out of archers <laughs> would be better. Like. Who needs a front line? We'll just put all the archers in the front line. Yeah, there you go. I, I kid you not, it will work better against anything that isn't made of or that isn't a horse lord's build. But if you're going up against that, you're you're in trouble. Uh, but I think that about resolves how combat works. Um, so to review, uh, we're going to restore order here. 
All right, so now we have nice balance. The first phase of combat, we have cavalry against cavalry. They meet on the flanks, and they fight. The back line gets to shoot onto the front line for both sides. Also, there is one last thing I'd like to mention. The defender always gets the first shot. This is just, 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 it's just, ran it's just a little random tidbit. The defender in combat gets the first shot. The archers and, because damage, like, one side attacks, then the other side attacks in each day, uh, the defender gets the first shot. I'd just like to call that out now. Defender gets the first shot. So, yeah, the back lines fire onto the front lines, and the front lines move in on each other. And they attack one-to-one. -one. You know, if one side has a bigger front line, then that just means... Uh, that they'll collapse in and, you know, you'll have multiple guys like this. Um, actually, that's a good thing to point out. Let's, let's, let's just assume that some guy forfeits the flanks and, uh, whoops, whoops. Let's, uh, undo that. Let's just assume some guys manage to forfeit the flanks and he's just bringing this. What happens with the front line now? Well, we know what the cavalry goes doing. The cavalry, uh, just, you know, run, runs up and around. They're, 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 they're not going to give a single shit. They're just going to go start cutting down your archers and artillery. And that's fine. However, these guys will do this. This is what you get. You'll get these five guys fighting these three guys like this. This, uh, you'll notice, tends to mean that uh, battles start out big, but you don't often get holes in the midline. Yeah, you, know, you end up sort of getting almost like... Because, you know, once the, you start to get the sides to collapse first, the mid tends to hold out the longest. Uh, which is, you know, generally about right. So, uh, that's, that's what happens when the front lines are of different sizes. Alright, that's pretty simple. Alright, so let's continue our review. So that's the first phase of combat. You got the back line firing on the front line, and the front line fighting the front line, and the cavalry fighting the cavalry. And then this continues until something in the there are two possibilities that happen one all the cav whoops all the cavalry on one side will die out option b all the infantry on the on one side dies out once this occurs then we enter phase 2 phase 2 is either cavalry attacking the back line if the if the opposing cavalry is dead then uh, the cavalry will move around and flank the back line and start cutting apart your archers and artillery. If the front line has collapsed, then the cavalry will withdraw from the flanks. The cavalry just kind of withdraw from the flanks and go and create a new front line that your units have to cut through. And the cavalry on this on also go and join the front line. It becomes, you know, the flanks become the front line. And this continues until stage three, which is there is no front line left at all on one side. Or, stage three, if there is no back line left on one side. If there's no front line left on one side, then all remaining units get to attack the back line. Simple as that. If there is no remaining back line, then the cavalry who were flanking in phase two get to attack the front line. And those guys are dead, so we'll cut them out. And they deal double damage against them. And that's really about it. There you go. That's uh, that's how combat in uh, the Europa Universalis games work. It's a pretty neat system. Also, you know, I, I'm just looking at uh, OBS here. You guys must think I'm crazy. There, I swear, there are like windows here. Like uh, pop-up windows. You guys just can't see them. Oh, man. Yeah, that's how I've been uh, changing stuff. Whoops. It did, didn't even see that. Oh, well. Anyway, uh, I'm about done here, so I would like to thank everybody for watching this Europa Universalis combat tutorial. I've been your host, Kelvin, and I hope you enjoyed. This has been Kelvin, signing off.